Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, Lil. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Well, I, I guess I, I kind of feel the need to apologize to you guys. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here. It is my show. And the phone number, if you want to be a part of it, 877-973-7425. During commercial break, I have been looking at my emails. Now, I don't even get a lot of the emails that come in. I decided it was bad for my mental health to see all the angry people. (laughs) But some people know my email address. And I have a lot of emails who are very from people very angry and upset and disappointed with something I said earlier. It was an example I used. I'm very sorry. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So I use the example to to explain Joe Biden and his presidency. I said, have you ever been behind an 80-year-old on the interstate? In the fast lane, typically, driving very slow, sometimes struggling to keep it within the lane, but in 75 miles an hour zone, doing 50 in the fast lane, uh, and that's Joe Biden, but he's also got a bunch of backseat drivers yelling at him in the White House. People are very offended that I use that example. I'm sorry. I just, uh, it, it, one person says it, it, it's very clear. I think that I'm a teenager who will never grow up. No, no. I'm very mindful of this point. I am very mindful that that one day there I will be there, but by the grace of God go I, and one day he'll put me there. But I assumed that everyone would be able to relate to that example uh, because it, it, it happens to the best of us. It's either that or the person has a Florida license plate. And for the life of me, I can't understand. Now, listen, no offense to those of you who are in Florida listening right now, but I live on I-75 in Georgia. And the I can guarantee you that when I am in the fast lane on the interstate and there's a person going slow in front of me, it is one of two things. It is either an 18-wheeler attempting to pass another 18-wheeler or... It is someone with a Florida license plate. And I don't understand why. When It has gotten to the point that when we are on the interstate and someone passes us in the fast lane and they have a Florida tag, both of my kids declare it a miracle. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be insulting. I was trying to come up with a good, relatable example of of, uh, that people can process here. To understand that Joe is is he's incompetent. He's not an he's not a geriatric who's dementia patient out of his mind, as, as some people say he is. He is an 80-year-old. He moves very slow with a bunch of people yelling at him in the back seat. And it, well, he's also always been incompetent uh, since he was in uh, since he was in the Senate for 50 years. He's been an incompetent know-it-all who doesn't understand that he's not the smartest guy in the room. And it's played out exactly as you would expect. Now, having said all of that and issued my apology, I genuinely did not. Now, listen, I've said some offensive things in the past. I've been admonished about making references to old people smell. I I won't go there. I'm trying to be good. I'm trying. Some people make it difficult, but I'm trying. You know, as an aside, this is where I get in trouble. I had someone track down the address to my home crazy person who admitted to being a senior citizen who no longer listens to me because I'm not down with all the stop the steal nonsense. And he felt compelled to find my home address and mail me a letter to tell me he no longer listens to me because as a 60 year old who thinks the election was stolen, uh, he just, uh, he, he can't listen to me anymore. And I thought it would be very funny to write the guy back since he doesn't listen to me. And so I wrote a letter back and I just said, dear, dear Larry is his name said, since you took the time to, I know he's the head coach. We'll we'll get to that one. That's that's actually bigger news. We'll have to get there. But first (laughs) 
It's the Saints. Of course I know Sean Payton's good. Sean Payton just left the Saints. We'll get to that. So I email Larry, I handwrite a, a nice stationary note back to Larry, and I say, Dear Larry, since you took the time to find my home address, to handwrite me a letter, to tell me that you're 60 and don't lend and believe the election was stolen, and since I don't, you never listen to me anymore, I thought the least I could do would be to write you back so you knew I got the letter and I could tell you I don't care. God bless Eric Erickson. And I sent it to him. I thought it was very funny. I put the picture on on social media and a certain type of person, all of whom are in an age group that apparently I can't reference without getting people said, I just, I can't believe you're so arrogant. You would do that. I thought it was funny. These people are humorless. I thought it was hilarious. But they're like, you must clearly care if you're taking the time to do this. I actually care that there were that many angry people out there. I almost said blue hair, but I didn't. I did not do that. So now I'm going to get myself in trouble if I keep on. So I'm going to move on to what I was going to talk about. Um, The New York Times. The New York Times has this story. With some voters ready to move on, Democrats search for a new message on virus. Subheading. Democrats were cheered for strict lockdowns and pandemic precautions. Now many weary voters want to hear the party's plan for living with the coronavirus. Question, question. Who cheered on the Democrats for strict lockdowns? I know I didn't. I know you didn't. Who, pray tell, cheered on the Democrats for strict lockdowns? The New York Times. The New York Times, that's who. Let me just cut to the chase. Josh Crashauer, National Journal, has this quote. This sums up the entire article. Democrats are keenly aware that Americans, including even some of the party's loyal liberal voters, have changed their attitudes about the virus and that it could be perilous to let Republicans brand the Democrats the party of lockdowns and mandates. Now, wait a second. Wait a second. I thought that the Democrats wanted to be known as the party of lockdowns and mandates. We've just gone through a year of the Democratic Party attacking Republicans for not being in favor of lockdowns and mandates, and suddenly they want to pretend otherwise. Let 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 me let me read you a little more here. The shift reflects a potential change in the nature of the threat. Now that millions of Americans are vaccinated, and Omicron appears to be causing less serious disease, but it is also a political pivot. Democrats are keenly aware that Americans, including even some of the party's loyal liberal voters, have changed their attitudes. You'll see more Democratic elected officials say that this is our forever now and we can't live our lives sitting rocking in a corner, says Brian Stryker, a partner at the polling firm ALG Research, whose work on Virginia's elections last year indicated that school closures hurt Democrats. We've just got to live with this virus, he says. The warning signs for Democrats are manifest. For the first year of the pandemic, Democratic governors in politically divided states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, and North Carolina responded aggressively to the pandemic and won high marks from voters of both parties. The issue was critical to President Biden's victory in 2020. Today, President Biden's overall approval, which has fallen into dangerous territory for any party in a midterm election year, is being kept down in part because of disappointment over his performance on coronavirus. Fewer than half of Americans approved of his handling of the pandemic, down from 66% in July. Now that vaccines have proven effective, Americans have lower tolerance for restrictions, strategists and elected officials said. While schools are largely open in the United States, many families are still dealing with fallout of two years of classroom disruptions, including loss of learning, mental health problems, and millions of parents who are driven out of the workforce. All right. 
for those of you who listened to what I just read, and you're scratching your head over this phrase, two years of classroom disruptions, among other things. Understand that there is an America out there that you and I probably don't live in. So I have an affiliate now, KXNT in Las Vegas, Nevada. I like to go to Las Vegas. I'm not a big gambler, but they have fantastic restaurants and I'm fat. I like to eat, but also I really like to shoot machine guns. And there are lots of fantastic places in Las Vegas to shoot machine guns and outside of Las Vegas. There's a place about 30, 45 minutes outside of Las Vegas I go to. It is in the middle of nowhere and they have 50 caliber guns and they have a selection of machine guns. In fact, they have one machine gun that has a suppressor built into it. And when you fire it, they actually make you take off your your ear protection because it's so quiet. Now, it's not the pew, 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 pew that they think you they, they think on James Bond. No, you actually hear the bang, but it is bang, 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 bang. It's not loud. It's glorious. I want one. And apparently you can buy them for $50,000. I don't have that money. Thought about selling one of the kids, but my wife wouldn't let me. But it's glorious. And I like to shoot guns. And when I go to Las Vegas, you got to wear a mask everywhere. Now, I take it off outside, but it's required in the casinos and the hotels everywhere. You got to wear a mask. I went to a hockey game, however, in Las Vegas last month. The the uh, Las Vegas Golden Knights were playing the Tampa Bay Lightning. I went to that game. Uh, it was a Christmas present to, to Philip, who works with me. And if I had a beer in my hand or a hot dog, I could take my mask off. It was absurd. Nobody wound up wearing masks. Even the two elderly ladies next to me who were big hockey fans all of a sudden, they weren't wearing their masks the whole game. Nobody was, but you're required to. And as you left, they had monitors when you came out of the arena and into the actual facility outside of where the ice rink was. They were telling you, put on your mask, put on your mask. You got to put on your mask. Now, I live here in Georgia. I haven't worn a mask in a long time. When the Omicron wave first started hitting, there were a lot of people who put back on masks at the grocery store. Now pretty much everybody's gone. You can tell when the, the, it's no big deal because the pharmacist stops wearing a mask and the pharmacist by and large at my local grocery store stopped wearing his mask. But there are two Americas. And for the longest time, the New York times propped up the one and condemned the other. The one they propped up was the one that kept everyone locked down, everyone in mass, and everyone home from school. And the one they condemned was the one that lets you live your life normally. Georgia, Florida, and then Texas, Arizona, Mississippi, and others condemned them all as hick southern states where everyone was going to die and the Democrats were going to come into power because all those crazy Republican voters were going to die. Turns out... Americans want to get back to normal. And those public officials now who tell us we now must upgrade to the N95 mask, they're the same public officials who told us, get the vaccine and go live your life. Get the vaccine and you wouldn't get the virus, they told us. Actually, you can, but you're probably not going to get very sick from it. And now suddenly they would like to memory hole all of that. They would like to have you forget that they were, in fact, the party of lockdowns and mandates. And up until the polling shifted after Virginia, they were really insistently still the party of lockdowns. Remember, as the Omicron wave started, you even had people in the New York Times, oh, my gosh, we need to lock down again. Oh, we need to mandate N95 masks on airplanes. Who's the media? Who are the Democrats? It is a terrible thing for public health policy. It is a truly terrible thing for public health policy that public health policy has shifted based on the polling showing the procedures are hurting the Democrats. Public health policy should not shift based on public opinion polling, but it has because it's been politicized from the very beginning. 
What's so fascinating to me is that all the shifts are happening now in the New York Times thinking it's perfectly normal to happen because, oh my gosh, there's a chance the Republicans could win. We need to change things right now to stop the Republicans from winning because we can't have them come back in power. And you know what will happen. If they're successful, the moment they win, it'll be back into masks and lockdowns because Tiger does not change its stripes. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson. Uh, the phone number here is 877-973-7425. Now to get to the story I most passionately care about, Sean Payton stepping aside as the Saints coach. I realize we're, we're, we're not a sports show, but just forgive me here for a minute being from Louisiana. Uh, the Saints growing up were awful. The Saints were horrible, and yet we rooted. You know, Philip works for me. He, he's a Tennessee football fan. God bless him. I understand what this is like by having grown up in Louisiana with the Saints when I was a kid and now to live in Georgia with the Falcons. It would be fantastic if if Aaron Rodgers took a pay cut and uh, the, the Atlanta Falcons just rebuilt the whole team around him. Uh, take your pay cut to get around the cap and bring in all the awesome players you want and rebuild the Falcons for us, buddy. We will cheer you on. So Sean Payton is out 15 seasons as the Saints coach. They won Super Bowl 54, seven NFC South titles, top five in total offenses 11 times, 152 wins. And, of course, he did get suspended that one season, but we don't talk about that. Nonetheless, you know, I, I so the weird thing about this, and I, so I've never really been a massive NFL fan until this past year, sitting on the porch with a group of guys watching game night all all week long, watching for there are so many, and they've all been so good, and I've never been a huge fan, and it's been a pleasant distraction this year with everything else going on to 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 watch football on Sunday nights with friends, and watch these amazing games and 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 get into this and, and connect to a game that I never grew. I mean, I grew up in Dubai, y'all. We had camel racing and cricket. Woohoo! Eventually soccer. Uh football, they would call it. I for reasons that that still boggle my mind. Nonetheless, the NFL, it, it's been kind of interesting, but we're kind of at this generational shift where the 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 big names it started with drew Brees, and now it's it's aaron Rodgers probably leaving ben roethlisberger's leaving uh maybe tom brady out of the game despite him belly aching that he doesn't want to go anywhere and now suddenly we've got these new quarterbacks coming up including joe, joe burrow from lsu and their championship but then to see these coaches starting to step away as the players they've been so identified with for so long are also stepping away uh, Drew Brees goes, and now a couple of years later, here comes Sean Payton leaving. It's just, I'm just fascinated by the whole thing. I really am. Uh, really, really deeply fascinated by the phenomenon. Hi there. <clears throat> it is Eric Erickson here. The phone number, 877-973-7425. I, I got, so Charles Cook at National Review has written this. <laughs> this is fantastic. Complete with emojis. This is actually great. I still, should I do a British, it is Charles, should I do a British accent? I still haven't stopped. <laughs> I still haven't stopped shaking after last night's attack. Standing at the White House podium, the President of the United States, the most powerful man in the world, launched a violent incursion against my friend Peter Ducey, the best reporter in history. Ducey is a true professional. As good as they get, he is my brother, my friend, my colleague, my inspiration, my valentine, my muse. He is a light shining in the darkness, a petal of truth beneath a gloomy cloud of power, a luscious wave that breaks exquisitely onto the shore. Peter didn't deserve to be called a stupid son of a B-word. Nobody in the media does. America is better than this. And then with the hand clapping emoji, this is not normal. Not normal in all caps. And then another clap for good measure. This morning, my eight-year-old daughter, Chrysanthemum, took off her gas mask and asked me why why the president would say something like that to an American hero. I'm ashamed to admit 
that neither I nor her mother knew what to say. The president said he'd restore honor and dignity to the White House, Chrysanthemum said, looking up at us from her hyperbaric chamber. But he's attacking the free press, which is just doing its job. This is how we lose our democracy. She's so wise for her age. She has so much potential. This isn't the world I want her to grow up in when she goes outside for the first time. On the statue I helped remove from New York City Hall, there is a quote from the slave owner Thomas Jefferson that has resonated with me ever since it became convenient to my side at 10 a.m. today. Our liberty cannot be guarded but by the freedom of the press, nor that be limited without danger of losing it. Just think about that. Let it sink in. Retweet if you agree. Our liberty is at stake here. Hashtag don't browbeat my Pete. I've studied the rise of Adolf Hitler. I know better than most how this happens. The thing Hitler did after he came to power was call reporters stupid SOBs when they asked him about inflation. Twelve years later, the world was in ruins. We are closer than you think to that happening again. First, they came for Philip Wegman. Then they came for Jackie Heinrich. Now, with the defilement of Pete Ducey, peace be upon him, I fear we are running out of time. We must be brave for Peter, for America, for the future. <laughs> that was well done, Charles Cook. Well done. This is the sort of stuff we got when Donald Trump was president, when the, the attacks were made on the press. And now they're excusing him. Uh, the the, the, the self-righteous peddler of conventional wisdom, Chris Saliza, is over at um is over at CNN saying it's it's just it's not the same. It's not the same. This is so different. So different from when Donald Trump did it. This is just, we, we can't compare the two. They're making excuses. Now, listen, as I mentioned at the beginning of the program today, the big issue here is not what he called Pete Ducey. The big issue here is that he fairly well, for the first time, conceded he knows uh, that the Democrats are toast because of inflation. I want now at the end of the day here to talk about the whole reaction to Pete Ducey. Because again, I don't think it's that big of a story per se. Uh, what's bigger is that Biden in his sarcastic response about inflation knows that it's going to hurt him. But I also think what's so interesting is that the media is not rallying to Pete Ducey. There are some who are. Jake Tapper at CNN is. A lot of them, however, a lot of them are not. They're cheering on Biden. They think it'll excite his base. They think it's good for the base's morale to see the president as a fighter. But, you know, it's only a matter of time before someone comes out and says, well, he's fighting Peter Ducey. Why wouldn't he fight Manchin and Cinema?" You know they're going to do that. I just find that it's another story. Not that Biden did it. Who, who cares about him? But the media circling the wagons around him as opposed to Pete Ducey because Pete works at Fox. He's at Fox. Um, it just it, it's it's striking to me in that regard uh, the the hypocritical nature of this the hypocritical nature of the press claiming the need for the freedom of the press and then the left as well. I mean, and, and Charles Cook captures this in his humorous piece that it was the death of democracy for Donald Trump to attack reporters, to say anything negative to a reporter, to abuse reporters, to call the press the enemy of the people, we're all going to die. It's 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 beyond the pale. 
And of course, all the stories from all the people, and you know they weren't true. My three-year-old took out her passy to say Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. Your three-year-old did no such thing. This reminds me of the old Jeff Foxworthy joke about his sister who wanted everybody to praise her son for standing in the yard, pointing to the sky, say, air pain, air pain. And Foxworthy's punchline was, the kid was 10. So this is what they're doing. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And yet, there we are. But they're doing it because they just can't escape the problems and there are a lot of growing, festering problems. You know, speaking of Pete Ducey, yesterday at the White House press conference, he asked this of Jen Psaki. On crime, to follow up on what Ed was asking about, mm-hmm. would you agree that the most important job for any president is to keep Americans safe? I would agree. So you said that the president's never satisfied if people don't feel safe. Does he know that after a year in office, people do not feel safe in this country? Well, Peter, I think if we look at the facts here, we've seen a surge of crime over the last two years. Would you agree with that? So what are you attributing the rise in crime to then? Well, I think we should be responsible in how we're reporting to the public what the what the what the uh, roles are, what the reasons for the surge in crime. Gun violence is a huge reason for the surge in crime. Uh, Underfunding of some police departments and their need for additional resources. Now, uh, I want to I want to stop right there. Gun violence is a reason for the increase in crime. Jen Psaki said this. Follow along with me here. Let's see. Can I pull this audio back here? Uh, underfunding of pol- some pol- violence is a huge reason yep, for the yep, surge. Yep, yep. Well, let me pull this back to the audio so we can hear this. Uh, roles are what the reasons for the surge in crime. Gun violence is a huge reason for the Okay, we need to understand, this is Jen Psaki, the White House Press Secretary, to Steve Ducey. We need to understand the reasons for the increase in crime. Gun violence is one of the reasons for the increase in crime. Uh, I thought gun violence was the crime. (laughs) Don't mean to shout. I'm sorry, but did y'all just catch that? It's like playing three card Monty with the middle midget. Gun violence is is gun violence is not a reason for an increase in crime. Gun violence is the crime that's increasing. <laughs> did you? I mean, do you catch that? And, and that's what she's doing here. Is is gun violence is somehow or another a reason for the increase? No. Gun violence is a crime that is increasing. Why is gun violence increasing? What's going on in the country? Could it possibly be that a bunch of uh, George Soros-backed district attorneys are refusing to prosecute crimes? Could it possibly be that Democrats have internalized critical theory and think if you're non-white and you commit a crime, you're actually lashing out at whitey. This isn't hard. When you start excusing people for their behavior, they engage in more of that behavior. This really isn't that hard. And they are, it's it's just, it's mind-boggling to me to hear Jin Psaki say we have to understand the reasons for the increase in crime. Gun violence is one of those reasons for an increase in crime. No, gun violence is actually the crime that is increasing. Carjackings are increasing. More people are are getting carjacked per day in Washington, D.C. right now than are getting the coronavirus. I said the other day, more people are being carjacked in Washington than are dying. And someone from Washington, D.C., listing on my live stream, emailed me and said, no, you got it wrong. More people are getting carjacked in Washington, D.C. per day than are getting coronavirus. And... 
they want to play the three card Monty and try to distract from the fact that it's gun violence isn't a reason for an increasing crime. Gun violence is a crime that is increasing along with carjackings, along with property thefts, break ins and the like. Now, why? They also, well, it's the virus. No, 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 no. It's not actually the virus. The virus caused no one to commit crime. What happened concurrent to the virus was a bunch of Democrats saying, nah, nobody gets killed. We're not going to prosecute. I mean, the, 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 the Democrats are fetishizing the purge. What's that movie where, where everybody's got to lock themselves in their house one night a year because crime is legalized, murder is legalized? I mean, the Democrats seem to be fetishizing that in their public policies. And here's the most interesting thing. This, I think, is a bottom line most interesting thing. The New York Times running a story today saying that the Democrats are changing their COVID health care policies, not because the underlying data has changed, but the underlying polling has changed. Republicans are starting to define the Democrats as the party of lockdowns and mandates, and it's blowing up in the Democrats' faces. So they're changing the public policy because the Republicans are defining them badly, and it's hurting them in the polls. Notice crime is hurting the Democrats in the polling as well, and they are not seeking to redefine themselves. They're not seeking to suddenly be the law and order party. They're not seeking to suddenly be tough on crime. That's fascinating to me that the Democrats will completely reorder their COVID priorities through a pandemic because of polling, but they will not reorder their crime and law and order priorities through a crime wave because they are beholden to the criminal interest or at least the people who excuse the criminal interest. Now, we need to clean the air. Literally, we need to clean the air with the Eden Pure Thunderstorm. You can get three of them by going to EdenPureDeals.com today, and you can save $200 and get all three of them for less than $200, and you get free shipping. It's a great deal on a great product. These things, they're, they're portable. You can hold them in your hand. You can put one in your car. You can put one upstairs, downstairs. you got a basement. I mean, you get three of them for less than $200. It's great. I use mine specifically in my kitchen when I'm frying to get the fried shrimp because I make shrimp tacos on Sunday nights and it kind of eliminate the shrimp odor because my wife hates the smell of seafood. But also in, in a musty mildewy area, I can put them in and cleans it up. And you know they're filterless. You don't get a you don't get a subscription for filters. You just wipe it out on occasion. It's great. What you do is you go to EdenPureDeals.com. Click on my name, Eric Erickson. Put the Eden Pure Thunderstorm three pack in your cart. And then at checkout, there's a discount code box and you put in Eric three E R I C K in the number three. You'll get all three of them for less than $200. That's over $200 in savings, and you get free shipping. It's a great deal for a great product from a great company, EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code at checkout is ERIC3. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. Y'all, you know, with all the problems in America today, I have to, I got to I gotta give a shout out to the Cleveland City Council. Uh, yep, that's right. Cleveland, Ohio. I, I actually have a massive number of, I don't have an affiliate in Cleveland, Ohio, but I get just thousands of people listening on the live stream from Cleveland, Ohio. So I saw this story and I was thinking of y'all. The citizens of Cleveland, Ohio, their number one issue that they care about, it's inflation. And you know what? The city council there has decided that uh, they are going to take on inflation. They are going to fight inflation, except the inflation they chose to fight is the inflation of balloons. On Monday, the Cleveland City Council banned the release of 10 or more balloons at a time. Because of the environment and power outages, violators of the ban will be subject to the same penalties as violators of the litter law. Minor misdemeanor citation and a $150 fine. It applies to latex and mylar balloons, but it's the mylar balloons that are the problem. They could hit power lines. And then there's Lake Erie, and they're upset about Lake Erie. Uh, 18,000 balloons or pieces of balloons have washed up on the shore between 2016 and 2018. Uh, and then there was the Balloon Fest in Cleveland, a United Way fundraiser that attempted uh, to release 1.5 million balloons, but it turned into a disaster 
with balloons wrecking havoc everywhere, including the airport. <laughs> well, that was that was dumb. But still, that was 1986. The, 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 of all the things to crack down on, you people in Cleveland who are releasing balloons into the air, there's your inflation. That's going to be a problem. Y'all are going to get carted off to jail. Well, not really. You're just going to get ticketed. Of all the ridiculous things. <laughs> it's popular among the young people, says Blaine Griffin, the council president. They're going to have to stamp it out because it's popular with them youngins. They might be dancing after that, after they release those balloons. <laughs> you know, so I have uh, the, those uh, Chinese uh, lanterns that you light, sky lanterns, they call them. And I am always deadly afraid that when I lift one of those things off, typically we'll do it for 4th of July, for New Year's or Christmas. I'm always just deathly afraid that one of those things is going to get stuck in a tree or come down and I'm going to set a forest fire. So I only will release them now if it's been raining for a few days because I'm just scared to death that one day I'm going to be on the front page of the paper. Erickson burns down Georgia. <laughs> It'll be Sherman and me. <laughs> I just, but of all the things, they're upset about the release of 10 balloons. So if you release nine balloons, you're okay. What happens to the poor florist on a windy day trying to deliver the pile of balloons to the hospital and the wind catches them and away those balloons go. Does the florist go to jail or just get fined? How do they know, by the way, how do they know that you've released the tin balloons? They'll track you down somehow. I guess they'll fingerprint the balloons when they fall back to earth. I mean, maybe, just maybe, if you release the balloons and they sailed into some other state, you could get away with it. Declare war on that state. Send them to Pennsylvania, to Erie. It's 2022, and guess what? Nothing still makes sense. The whole world seems to be going crazy right now, and banks have gotten really skittish at helping small businesses. They're perfectly happy to help the giant businesses, but what about you? You're a small business, you got to buy a building or build a building, or you need a big loan for a fleet of vehicles to grow your business, and the banks are giving you a hard time. Check out my friends at First Liberty Building and Loan. They can help you nationwide, wherever you are, if you're a small business and you need access to loans, let's say 500000 and up, First Liberty can do it. They've been doing this since the early 90s. The Frost family are friends of mine. They're committed Christians and they're great business people and they are committed to small businesses. Reach out to them. FirstLibertyGA.com is their website. FirstLibertyGA.com. Spend 10 minutes with them. See if they're a good fit for you. See if you're a good fit for them. They want to help you get to yes where the big banks are saying no. Nationwide, they can help you if you're a small business. FirstLibertyGA.com is the website. FirstLibertyGA.com. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.